everybody and welcome back to our podcast. It is your host, Steffu. And Julia, as usual. And together, we're still derps and burps. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to our podcast. Um, today, episode 83, we're going to talk about a lot of different topics and in specific after like catching up and talking a little bit about the things that have been happening um in the last few weeks we're going to also talk a little bit about uh the influence of big influencers and decision and the decisions you have to make as a creator on uh which of your ideas and uh views on certain topics you want and can share and what are the um the consequences that come with sharing certain parts of your life. So that is going to be a little bit of the main topic from today. Um, but beside of that, we're going to catch you up a little bit, what we've been up to. We're going to talk about the derp of the week. And then we're going to spill a little bit of the whole tea. We're going to be talking a little bit about Lizzo, a little bit of Taylor Swift. Um, and we got some big news we started a patreon for you guys um so we're gonna be talking about that as well because in the last episode we were talking about how we're probably gonna make lesser episode but higher quality um which at this point of the recording because we pre-produced one episode we didn't really see yet your reactions uh to the topic um so we you're gonna hear or hear us talk about your reactions mm -hmm. to that topic <laughs> in the next episode because again we pre-recorded um but yeah we already uh prepared a patreon and we're going to be talking about it today as well how if you want to support the podcast you can do that uh, starting this week um but before we get into that we're going to catch up a little bit with steffi um again as we said we recorded the last episode a few days before this so there's not that much time in between so there's not going to be major news um but yeah steffi update us what's new lady uh, there isn't much that happened but i started to play Baldur's Gate 3 which is basically a dungeons and dragons game uh i don't know how old the others are because obviously there is Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 i have never played those mm -hmm. uh and i just started with the third part of it which is pretty crazy when it comes to the cinematics and the story already and everything we played for like five hours yesterday in private with Mux, sims and Luki, like Mux's brother and a very good friend of us our former like roommate and it was very nice like in the beginning i was kind of overwhelmed with everything because i've played dungeons and dragons twice so i know how the round based fights work but with the whole game like throwing you into a new setting into a video game in specific of dungeons and dragons where you have to get used to all the controls and the interface and everything it took me quite a while to get used to it especially mm -hmm. with your class and everything because you choose a class and every class has different characteristics and stuff right so you need to get used to that as well um but it's very nice because basically everything you do and sims max and Luki have played the beta back then so they mm -hmm. know the first chapter already because you could have okay. like you could play a lot in the demo version already uh so we're basically going through this right now just together so sims knows a lot already about like what's happening in this area right mm. and i'm always like i'm just going there what does the button do and i can click <laughs> it because i don't care and i sometimes i just want to annoy him because he's always like oh no we should do that he's always oh, he's always oh, like yeah. a bit how to say i do it on purpose then right mm. because yeah to trigger him so he just, wants to yes, go exactly. a certain direction and you just want to be the little annoying one that's like oh i want to check this out i want to do this what if i press this button he's like no don't do it oh, exactly exactly it. and i'm I fucking pressing it so um yeah it's fun because obviously you have four people that are completely different and think different some people are like ah nah, let's don't do this and then Sims is always like Max safe 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 save the session save the session because obviously he knows already what's happening I don't so I'm yeah. like hm, I'm just doing it anyways I don't care like I haven't yeah. experienced that yet so it's pretty cool with the story as well uh the NPCs the interactions you have and everything we've played five hours so far um and we're gonna play on Tuesday again mm -hmm. so I think at the like by the time you hear the next episode i can talk way more about it already because we're gonna be deeper into the story mm -hmm. but just to summarize it i really like it it was tough in the beginning 
to get used to it, but now I'm getting the hang of it and I really enjoy it. It's pretty cool. And I want to do, or what I do as well is I start one campaign on stream, mm -hmm. probably alone. Not sure yet. I created my character already. She's a uh, druid. That's the one for the stream? That's the one for the stream. Yeah. My character uh, of our session, like of the private session is a tiefling rogue. Mm -hmm. She's pretty cool. And basically because I, I know I know the race and I know I know Rogue, the class. So yeah. I decided to go with this because I already played that in the one shots we did uh, in Dungeons and Dragons. So I was like, okay, you know what? I kind of have an idea what this class does. So let's stick with that. And I really liked it as well. So it's a pretty cool class. And beside that, Ben and I, that was actually a funny thing, like how that happened because Ben and I were playing uh, League of Legends on the weekend. Mm -hmm. And then I said, I got invited to a a, fest, a festival or not a festival, but an event of like gathering generations of my mm -hmm. old generations, like ancestor gathering, basically, which like my mom got to know when her dad died last year, which was my grand grandpa, but I never knew him because I only knew my step or my mom's stepdad back then. Mm -hmm. he died last year and that's how my mom got in contact with more of her like family side mm -hmm. more people of her family side and they invited us to a family gathering which like goes years like how to say generations years back. back yeah generations back and we got this invitation which is like an old cabin and then there's very old black and white portraits of the people on it so yeah. basically how a horror movie starts right or like okay uh, a, a, a thriller movie starts and then i told that ben and ben was like yeah have fun it gotta be like in midsummer and i was like what is midsummer wait where are you said, gonna some... where's the invitation is it in austria it's is in it? it's in Carinthia, yes okay, it's in Carinthia okay. in october and then he said yeah it's a very cool movie you're gonna love it you're gonna love it there and i was like okay yeah let's watch it and he was like I don't think that's a movie for you. You you won't be ha able to handle it. And I was like, I'm going to show you. Let's watch it. And then he came over mm -hmm. and we started to watch it. And it's basically about generations and a commune celebrating this in Sweden. And there's the midsummer, just... The midsummer celebrations? Yeah, it's about midsummer. And it's basically just there's so much disturbing shit going on. It's insane. It's very splattery, very detailed. You see like how heads crush and how a head looks when you smash it with a hammer mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. broken leg. It, it's it's just, it's very disgusting. So I wasn't expecting that. Um, and after that, I, I like mid watching of the movie, I went to the kitchen and grabbed the invitation and showed it to Ben and Ben just blasted out in laughter and said like, yeah, have fun. <laughs> Looks exactly like this. And I was like, okay, I'm going to cancel it. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. And if I go there, I mean, I'm going there obviously with my mom because she already said like that we're coming. Um, I said, I at least know What's when something like? feels off. <laughs> I know when Listen, to you can give always escape. You give me a call, I come pick you up, okay? Mm -hmm. we, you, mm -hmm. we make up like a, a code word that you text me, mm -hmm. or like, you know, the panic buttons that you can put on iPhone. Like, if you press that, mm -hmm. then it sends an automatic message to me and I sends me your location and I, I come pick yes, you up. Yes, please. I'm, I probably need that then. It's in October, <laughs> though, so. Perfect. I want to, I want to, I want to like survive October because my birthday is after that, so. I'd you're be gonna be very fine. grateful if I, you're gonna be if fine. I survive this. I'll protect so, yeah, you. I'm gonna start working out harder so I can. Please do so. I, I'm, and I'm, I'm gonna... gonna try to get some moves in as well in case they they want to brainwash me there and do all the <laughs> disturbing stuff they did in this movie. Honestly, uh, I could see you join a cult. I'm gonna be honest. I'm very no. That's you don't think like, so? Mm -mm. I'm as soon as something gets obsessive, mm -hmm. I'm out. Like, the same with MGK and Megan Fox back then, when he said, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, they were drinking blood of it, so romantic. I'm like, mm, mm too far, too far. This is too much for me. They went to a freaking, you know what they did? They, they also went to, like, um, I think somewhere in South America, something like that, mm -hmm. to try ayahuasca. I don't know if you know ayahuasca. What is that? It's, ah, fuck, I'm not sure if it's, like, um, 
uh, is it something you drink? So it's basically a poison that makes you uh, puke. Like you basically cleanse your body. Like it's a poison. You not really a poison, but it's something that makes you hallucinate. I think. So it's a hal halogenic. Ha halo halogenic. Is it like frog poison? Kind of like the, I don't. I forgot what it's made out of, but it's basically it makes you hallucinate, and uh, you only take it with a shaman. So you need to. Okay, but. It's like a guided. That is interesting. It's again. a guided spiritual thing. So basically, you go there. Yeah. Uh, it's like a two or three times thing that you do in the uh, in three days. So you drink it. You have to throw up, and then you start hallucinating with like a shaman in a group, and then it basically it's supposed to like bring up your deepest trauma. Like each mm -hmm. day that you take it, it will evoke something different. So for some people, mm -hmm. it can like bring up their their the deepest like demons and and can make like very horrible trips but for other people or like for like the second or third time it can like open their third eye or whatever it is right so it's it's depending um what is on your inside that it will bring yeah. out so there's like a whole interview of them uh talking about it how like the first two days for him i think were very horrible and he went into like very bad places and then the third time yeah. it really like opened up something and uh, i think megan did it before so ayahuasca yeah exactly that's how you say, say it Ay oh. ayahuasca I, I don't know okay. anyway that's um, the thing that's interesting though and there would you do that similar would you do in that? Boba Fett. i would do that yeah i'd be interested in that i think i would do it too but I think like it needs to be like guided and by shaman. Like I would yeah. have to have yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And you're like in the jungle and you have to like shit in the jungle and you have to throw up and everything. Like it, it it's apparently really intense. And uh, the way like like Megan describes it, like she's a very spiritual person. So like mm -hmm. I'm gonna send you the video once where they were talking about it. Like she yeah. described it as going to hell and being re reincarnated and uh coming back with her third eye open and i don't know like really crazy shit um and it made her realize how um how how important life is but yeah it's it's definitely like weird hey like you know, we went to like south africa to take some fucking hard drugs and then we came back enlightened and shit like that so <clears throat> anyway but that's that's kind of like how if if i would do that with anybody i would probably do that with you yeah so we can make a trip to to south uh, yeah. america and uh lick some frogs <laughs> do it lick some frogs yeah Let's do that, that's a thing like that's nothing that has like a cult um feeling to it in my opinion because it's more like you didn't you watch know, a lot of shows about shamans, cults, did you huh uh, the thing is obviously they use these things as well but where it comes from is from very old tribes that are very oh, like, yeah, of course, connected of course. to nature. And that's why I connected with that rather so than the whole horror movie. Natural if I would correct, okay. <laughs> Yeah, if I would connect everything with a horror movie, I could not go into oh, yeah, the yeah, forest yeah. anymore. I could not live in my apartment or anywhere else. It's just, I always have to, re or when I was younger, I always had to remind myself that I'm currently just scared of something because I saw it in a horror movie. <laughs> yeah, I get that. So yeah. Um, like I mean, I see. I've watched a lot of like serial killer documentaries and stuff like that, and I've seen everything. So mm. the the part that I'm going into, like, a lot of cult leaders became serial killers, right? Because they um, made their communes or something um, commit like group suicides and stuff like that right no um so i actually tumbled through this into watching a lot of stuff about cults and how um some of the biggest cult leaders made their community as a uh, tight knit and how mm -hmm. like a lot of people that you would think that would never fall or become a part of the cult made them actually um get into a cult like it, it's an actually really really interesting um topic and how they <clears throat> those leaders like those individuals right <clears throat> yeah. they they're <clears throat> just so good at making people either feel safe heard seen special 
they they can see exactly what those people were like where they're vulnerable what they were missing in yeah, their life yeah. <clears throat> and they give exactly that to them and then they, they take it away and so basically what they do most of the time they make them how do you say it? they make them um addicted to the person right so they yeah, yeah. It, ugh, fuck i forgot the the english word i wanted to sound really smart um and they, it's basically like codependency what they made like there's some yeah, that yeah. started as like yoga retreats and then they made them into made them work at the fucking farm for them so the leader would get like 15 full body massages every day get only homegrown food so he can live like <clears throat> yeah. 120 and whatever so there's some crazy shit in that direction um but to come back a little bit to the the whole midsummer thing like i actually didn't really know i think it was uh, novra that gave me like a short um introduction to what midsummer is please some of my swedish of course um, or, or nordic um, people correct me in the comments if i'm wrong because i'm not uh, super super educated in the topic but so basically midsummer um celebrates the longest a day of the year right when the sun not when it takes it so when the days like it's the longest day of the year and then the days and after then the days get shorter. shorter exactly um and basically uh what they do they also celebrate uh, fertility so i think if i remember it correctly they they bury a dick in the ground and women are supposed to find i think seven different kind of flowers or i'm not sure the exact number but i think seven different kind of flowers and then they make like a, a wraith out of it that they wear in the, the head and then they celebrate and then when you go to bed at night you're supposed to take those flowers put them under your pillow and then have intercourse with your partner and then you're supposed to get pregnant no, um, I want to know if you have seen the movie and then please tell me how accurate that is, okay? Like, if you guys are doing what they're doing in this movie. And they all get drunk and they play I'm a lot just... of games. That's that's from that's yep. what I know. But I think it's yep. celebrating fertility in the land and with the people. Yeah, basically. Exactly. Yeah, yep. it's exactly what the it's movie is. All the movie shows as well. It's, <laughs> it's awesome, guys. You learn a lot when you watch it. Perfect. Never um, join them. <laughs> we, we're never we're never going to sweden and celebrating with summer you know what we could do what would be really funny imagine we do some vlogs where we do crazy shit like this like go to sweden in summer celebrate midsummer then we fly mm -mm. to south america like some Julia, there won't be a lot of vlogs because we're gonna be dead after oh, yeah. the first one if That's we fine. start with the sweden thingy but to be fair there's a lot of beautiful scenery we start with the kevin in the woods movie. Mr. Steffi, this year we need to get to a kevin together yeah yeah okay yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then we sit in front of like a fireplace and record an episode in real life on our iPhone. Mm -hmm. Take some frogs. Would love to. It would love. To. <laughs> Listen, no, but uh, that's now the last thing all I, I can to think say. about is like a frog with you. I mean, to be fair, that's one thing like I would do in my life. You know, that's I don't nothing. know. I'd be. I wouldn't do it I by need myself, to be... but I would do it with you with yeah and in combination with the whole ritual oh like, the shame yeah yeah puking throwing so, up shitting myself three days straight no more plus i need to be in a in a medical <laughs> in the office i need to be in a state where i can say okay i want to do this now oh like, yeah for sure you need to mentally that's what they tell you so. like if you want to do that like you cannot be like in a in a very like if you go there while you're like in depressed state while you're yep. like in a yep. very bad mental state this will fuck yep. you up i mean it's the same with let's for example um when you smoke weed for example and you take a lot of it Push like roast. it just enhances the emotions that you have bottled up so if you are exactly. in, if you know that you're mentally in a very very bad state and then you take yep. anything that releases do that, that kind of emotions that's when when you fuck yourself up and then when you when you sometimes get those drug induced uh, traumas as well so you just make everything way worse um yeah. so yeah <clears throat> think about uh, if you think about doing that make sure that you're in a good mental state um yeah. not that i've done it before but uh, I, I i had a little bit too much weed at one point and i had a mental breakdown so you can believe me when i tell you it's not a fun time so don't do it mm -hmm. um <laughs> 
Uh, but yeah, to talk about what's new with me, um, I think I said last episode that my parents and I are coming over. They're staying right now over here, um, having a really nice time. I'm happy to have them over. We usually just see them like once or twice a year. So I think mm -hmm. the first time we see them this year. Um, so it's nice to have them here to chat. Um, yeah, just in general, a nice time. We're going to a lot of restaurants, so we're a lot uh, around everywhere. Um, yeah, I played Palia. So the Palia uh, beta is out. I'm addicted. I love it. Um, I love everything about it. I love the way it feels, the way it plays. Uh -huh. I love all the small little details of how you can um, decorate your house. Um, it's really I grindy. Have to say, yes. I joined your stream like when you mm -hmm. played it. And at first look, I thought you were playing Fortnite. It was so interesting. And I was like, oh, yeah, I remember Palia was kind of like mm -hmm. a mix of the look because how the character moved and stuff i was think it's the fortnite. engine i think it's the yeah, engine yeah. right i'm not 100 percent sure but it might be created in the same engine mm -hmm. is it unreal engine four or five something yeah i think it's just the same engine so it looks pretty similar um yeah in the way it's made but yeah for people by the way for the people that don't know what palia is palia is basically an open world mmo that unreal engine for it by the way thank you so much for checking for um so it's an mmo created in unreal engine 4 it is a cozy open world game where you can basically decide what you want to do you can go fishing you can uh, cook everybody has their own plot of land so you can build your own house you can make it really mm -hmm. huge you can expand your land you can um grow your own food so you can grow veggies uh you can farm you can do so many different things so it's a combination out of a lot of different games so it's like a mm -hmm. mix between let's say world of warcraft sims in the way you can decorate and, and build your house um it has some influences of i think it's similar to like dreamlight valley but there's a multiplayer aspect to it right mm -hmm. um you have a little bit of a uh, farm will in there like it, it is a lot of different cozy games like thrown together it's just a real feel good game is the way that i would uh describe it obviously you need to like the the cosmetics or the way the game looks i personally mm -hmm. i'm really attracted to the way it looks so yeah. that's why it works for me really well um so the two only two negative things that i can say and uh, keep in mind this is still in the beta when i played it in a closed beta it was not even open beta yet um i got an invite because i signed up on the email uh, list i also tried to become a palia partner but it didn't want me <laughs> um for whatever reason but anyway i still support the game i love the game uh so the two only negative things that i can say is uh for example there's some time gating that they do in mm -hmm. the game um so <clears throat> for example in the beginning when you build your house so i think i was grinding for like three hours to farm all the mats to build like my first house like first you get a little mm -hmm. tent and then you can build your first house so i grinded three hours for the base materials to build the house you put the materials in you click on craft and then it says thank you your house will be done building in eight hours so it's like mm -hmm. it it's that time gated stuff um no, the yeah. thing the thing about palia um what the creator said though because i was a little bit afraid that it's gonna be like a phone game you know where it's time gated and then you can skip the time gate through paying for it that is not mm -hmm. the case so basically um from what i saw from what palia said openly in their uh streams in their interviews in their official statements so palia is going to be a free to play game and they're mm -hmm. planning to not sell anything in their shops or in the game through real money that you can grind for so there's no pay to win there's no yeah. pay to skip grinding or skip time gates they're only gonna sell cosmetics and they're mm -hmm. not gonna take stuff out of the shop so once stuff is in the shop it's gonna stay in the shop so there's no like cool. oh this is a super rare account because it has a skin from like i don't know two years ago or something yeah. like that so um what they want to build is a community that enjoys the game and is willing to pay money purely for cosmetics to um support the developers of the game but mm -hmm. they really want to stay away from making it pay to win or making it pay to be easier or faster to progress in the game whatsoever mm -hmm. which um i'm not sure how sustainable it is to keep it up because obviously like in games like valorant uh, league of legends it works but it's a really different kind of game it's a really grindy 
chill game so and that brings me to the second point about the game where i'm not 100 percent sure how it's gonna work because i'm not sure what the late game is gonna be like i understand there's mm-hmm. always more things to to grind to like be able to buy a new machine to create now other different kinds of minerals like um for example like you uh collect iron ore and then you need to make a smelter so you can smelt the ore into like a bar of copper or whatever it is yeah, or yeah. iron or whatever um so you always need to go on to unlock new things but i'm not sure what the late game is gonna be is there's gonna mm-hmm. be any PvO- pve i don't think there's any pvp in the game from what i saw so i'm not mm-hmm. sure how the late game is gonna look again this is still in like a closed beta that i talk about in general i really love it but i'm not sure what the long-term game is that they're just gonna add on new things all the time i guess and how do you like can you play together or yes. can you meet up or how does that work like exactly. do you have to be in a party or you, you can meet you can make communities in a game so it's basically like a okay. guild if you want you so yeah. um how how it works like um it is smaller service but you don't have to select a server that you play on mm-hmm. so let's say you play and i play right i can add you as a friend and then mm-hmm. I can either just invite you in a group and you're going to be transferred on my server. You can also come and look okay. at my homes. You can go in groups. Um, you can uh, do quests together. Let's say, for example, I need to farm a certain material uh, f- to build something new. Like I can just invite you in my group and we can go farm that stuff together. You can also uh-huh, short- okay. share and trade materials back and forth. So it it is a normal um, a multiplayer MMO. So you can do basically everything together and share everything and trade everything. Okay. Um, the only thing I think that you cannot do is, so far at least from what I know, that you can't build a house together. So everybody has their mm-hmm. own home. You can go and visit and do everything, but I don't think you can like make like a shared home, if that makes sense. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. But so far, I really have to say, especially for like, I know it's a closed beta, like the game looks mm-hmm. very, very good. And not not many bugs like it looks like a very finished game which makes me really excited because a lot of the games yeah. that i played this year were a lot of unfinished games and i heard for example the same for Baldur's gate right i heard that it sets like a new standard for uh developers like triple a developers for um creating a game that is actually very well finished um and I think it's good Luki to, also to have said, something done. Yeah, Luki was playing in the beta, right, of Baldur's Gate. Mm-hmm. And he said they still, like now the game's out, they still added so, so many things and so many different things to it. So things we did yesterday, he did already in the beta as well. But we had a completely different outcome or yeah. got completely different items. So they like there was a lot of bugs in the beta as well. What I remember what they said, plus... The graphics weren't that uh, polished. Mm -hmm. So now Max said that yesterday that he's super happy with it. Like what they did after the beta, like to finish the game or round it up. And we haven't experienced any bug yet. So I haven't. I haven't seen. I haven't seen anything either from from what I've been seeing. And to come back to Baldur's Gate, like I want to play Baldur's Gate as well. And what I'm planning, like I don't want to rush it. I don't want to. I'm. I'm not sure if I want to play it alone. Like what I think is that I'm gonna make a group with people. Like I was thinking, like maybe something like Martin, Nosh. I would really like to play the game with Sazu. I'm That's not sure yeah. if he wants to play it. Or he wants to make a run, and maybe even you, Steffi. I don't know if you want to play an, an one version on stream as well, or if you want to play it was... alone. No, 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 no. That's the thing. Like, why the reason why I'm doing it in private with my friends is like because uh, I said that last episode. I think yeah. right. Not everyone wants to be on stream all the time. Yeah, Plus, exactly. you kind of have a commitment with it because it is a Dungeons and Dragons game where you like decide on a day and time and you play together yeah, exactly the story. so i didn't want to burden them with my stream stuff mm-hmm. so i think this is a good thing like if we say or decide we, oh, want yeah, to we go could if the you story want together because you can always you have a, a, a separate uh saving yeah, you have, yeah yeah for each for each session you do yeah. so mux basically has our session right now i don't have that in my savings so oh, he always okay. has to invite me to our session and okay. for example, when I create a session, we can go in as two with mm-hmm. 
two other NPCs because there's always quests yeah. you can do with the people you meet in game. Yeah. Um, which would basically probably be easier to like set a date for us once a week. Yeah, to play then it's for people. Then four people plus they're all on stream again it depends on if they yeah, want to do that like we can we can see like i definitely i want to have for sure like one one big uh, mm -hmm. one group is four people because i think yeah. just the dynamic of having four people would be really it's fun a lot of fun yeah as you say the thing is just to have the commitment and find people that have like the same yeah. time um yeah. but yeah i would love to do this um so maybe Steffi we can we can see we can talk uh, after the the episode maybe we mm -hmm. start one and we could even like make like a little uh YouTube series out of that you know yeah like, just up upload the the gameplay of it so that would yeah. be really fun um so yeah, Baldur's Gate looking really good so for me so far the three best games this year for me personally just because I I love them um I mean, Diablo was good as well, but they kind of fucked it up, right? So, mm -hmm. um, but I would say uh, Baldur's Gate from just from what I saw, I haven't even played it yet, but Baldur's Gate looks really, really good. Uh, Palia, my personal favorite co favorite cozy game, and I have to say, I, we continued yesterday another world in Remnant Two mm -hmm. uh, with Martin and Remnant Two. It looks fantastic as well. Like uh, again, like such yeah. a beautiful, polished, finished game um it's mm -hmm. so cool with the different worlds like yesterday we so i told like last time or two episodes ago i told uh, and you watched that it was like the elven world that was like separated mm -hmm. in light and dark and now we got put into um it was some kind of like a forest like with uh with that was infested by some kind of fungus or like a virus mm -hmm. um that is like red and had like little googly eyes everywhere mm -hmm. and uh it basically brought back one of the bosses from remnant one which was like a wolf ah. but this time yeah. the wolf was infected by this virus and so he was overgrown by the virus and uh it was super interesting because in this level in the beginning you uh meet like a forest goddess and she asks you like questions where you need to decide you know um mm -hmm. would you uh sacrifice an innocent to save a whole village you know like she would ask mm -hmm. you questions like this oh, in, that's in, so uh, disgusting. yeah she would ask you those oh. questions in the beginning of the world when you entered and i realized it after like it was a super long conversation you had with her right and then she would tell you like if you're a good person if you're a bad person if you're balanced if you're well-rounded you know that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and then through playing through the whole world you would realize that all of those decisions that she asked you that you would have to make have an impact you would have to make them in game like you would actually yeah. have to make this decision while playing oh okay so it was kind of like all like very well hidden so you only realize yeah. it at the very end because in the very end uh you meet the wolf that is like overgrown from the virus and there is a uh, dove so there's like a baby uh deer right and uh, the wolf offers you to make a uh to to collab with him to like be on his side and mm -hmm. just to join him and be one of his allies all you have to do is to kill the deer okay. so you have to decide to either kill um the innocent deer in front of him to join him or you just decide to to fight him and try to save alarm. the deer alarm and okay. uh spoiler uh, Martin and me, we decide to fight the wolf because we would not uh, sacrifice the innocent deer. We start fighting him and he kills the deer anyway. Yeah, I made a bad decision as well yesterday. You just reminded me and I regret it a lot. <laughs> that's the kind thing. of similar. Hmm? Like, that's the thing. Like, it's not, it's the right decision, but it, it comes to the same outcome it, it and you could change the outcome. Yeah. Yeah, exactly yeah. it's just like a a trial of uh if you're a good person way like moral you know. yeah, yeah exactly yeah, it's like yeah. testing your moral compass pretty cool where, though where pretty cool. but yeah so i have to say like remnant is such a cool mix out of just cool aesthetics puzzles the way the way you you play the game and then like 
with like showing you your moral compass as well a little bit mm-hmm. so i really have to say remnant 2 i did not know anything about the game then spontaneously started playing it with martin ending up being i think one of my favorite games did you finish it already no 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 we we're like okay 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 we're like we finished five worlds so it's like uh around like the, the main navigation thing where you tp around i think it is like like it has eight pieces and i think we did four or five so far Mm -hmm. okay okay. so so yeah i pretty much in like i think story-wise martin said we're towards the end but like when it comes Mm -hmm. to the discovered worlds um i think we only discovered like half of the worlds yet okay okay. it's it's like a nice to play but because if you want to finish one world it's like roughly four hours three and a half four hours to finish like one chapter like one world um so we always do like one world each session we play mm-hmm. so it feels like well-rounded and and nice so i can really nice. recommend doesn't matter if you play it solo or in co-op mode and yeah. every time you play it again you get different bosses like you have a new experience every time you play it so oh, not cool. not every player has the same experience in game so so you yeah. might if you play it you might dis- uh, face other bosses mm-hmm. than i do so your experience could be completely different than mine oh okay okay <clears throat> that's why people like play it over and over again as well because yeah, yeah. there's so much more to to find about it so i really have to say remnant 2 really amazing game um now nice. we've been talking for a very long time but before <laughs> we forget it Steffi, do you want to tell us about the Derp of the Week? Which, by the way, has been Derp of the Week. Now it's the seventh time in a row, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, it's Mark finally fallen. (laughs) Once again. (laughs) (laughs) Under episode 79, Two Girls, One Weep, featuring Elle Cornflake. And Mark says, Hi, Elle. Nice to meet you. I could go on for hours about upcoming games, but this comment is just a friendly reminder for you to check out Atlas Fallen. Looks really good. Beside that, I feel what you're saying about Assassin's Creed series, I haven't enjoyed the last Assassin's Creed at all. That's why I'm so hyped for Mirage, as they want to go back to the originals gameplay-wise. I hope they manage to do that. Same here. Also, I have to add, I feel Verena so much. Like I'm washing my hands 20 or 30 times a day. It's crazy. Finally, someone who understands. <laughs> Don't have much to add about the second part of the episode since I'm so far away from manga and anime. But I appreciate Julia asking her mom for a moonstone like it's the most <laughs> usual thing to have. <laughs> uh, and you know what the funniest thing is? I'm wearing a moonstone right now. Not like yep. an extra stone from the moon, but the jewel, the monst- moonstone. Yep. And that brings me also... Um, to a brand that I found uh, because of a new friend of mine. So I said it before that um, I made a new friend some weeks ago. Her name is Adeline, Adeline Frost. Um, and she actually wrote me because of my back piece, my tattoo that I'm doing. And she's like, oh my God, is this Hecate that you're getting tattooed on your back? And I'm like, oh my God, you know who Hecate is? Like uh, mm-hmm. Hecate, like I feel like now, like we talked about it and stuff like that, but there's usually not too many people to know about Hecate because she's not like a super known Greek goddess and stuff. And she's mm-hmm. like, oh my God, I wore like a medallion, like a, a medallion. I don't know how to say it. Yep. Like I, I wear a piece of jewelry of her almost every single day. And then like I scroll through her pictures and I'm like, dude, she's <clears> wearing this every single day. And she's like, um, you need to check out the jewelry brand they have like from all of the goddesses, like Greek mythology, um, they have like a lot of the um, Egyptian, Egyptian mythology stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they have a lot of different um, goddesses and symbols. Like they have those medallions with like the goddesses on it. So I ordered it and I got it like straight a week later. I got the Hecate um, necklace, the pendant, and the triple moon necklace. I'm gonna give you a little close up mm-hmm. if you're watching the stream on YouTube or even on Spotify. Go, oh, damn! What's happening? We add the link as well, so people yeah, can check we're gonna, it out. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna add the link. Sadly, I have no code or nothing. Um, I have to say the quality of the jewelry is really good. They're a little bit expensive, a little bit pricey. I think I paid like two hundred fifty for both necklaces, but I'm mm-hmm. super super happy with the quality, um, of the jewelry. They're stackable. You can adjust the length of each necklace. 
um so if you ever want to get a cool piece of jewelry Aoi, please sponsor me i know it will never happen but super mm. super in love with that kind of jewelry um so yeah <sighs> dead um actually brings us to our topic today so we wanted to talk a little bit about the influence of uh, big influencers um which i think is a nice um transition from you know we were talking about remnant to how you get tested on your moral compass and it's kind of the same in real life when you're um a creator when you're an influencer like sometimes you have to decide um how your more compass looks like what you what you're sharing what part what part of uh, conversations you want to be um so steffi came up with that because like in the last few weeks there's a lot of things that happened um especially in the public eye of a lot of creators musicians so we went from everything from the whole Lizzo drama uh, denying all the allegations that what happened what, what was it basically she was uh bullying some of her dancers right was that the body shaming yeah, yeah the allegations are basically body shaming and she's creating a very toxic environment a work environment so that's just what i read guys i don't know if yeah, anything of this mm. is true obviously but what i read was that also producers who worked on documentaries with her uh, left after a week or two because she was just so toxic and they just couldn't work with her because the environment was just awful like yeah. she created in there and um what she was saying like Lisso replied with uh with a with an insta post about it i can't remember everything she said but one thing stuck with me and that was that uh with with uh how did she say it with hard work uh, hard work requires tough uh circumstances or something like that in like in this direction you know what i mean with Sounds, like uh, i imagine an old white man would have said that <laughs> she's working hard oh and my God. obviously this oh, yeah work. it's like something like that it's not how i phrased it but yeah yeah i know what you mean i know what you mean it goes in that direction mm -hmm. and again we don't know what is true i think it's going to court anyways and yeah I'm not sure how much we will like get to know about all this but yeah we just saw that for example beyonce uh removed a feature of lisa from one, exactly. one of her songs yeah. um then we saw the exact opposite kind of happening so we saw the whole toxic list of stuff again allegations we don't know if it's true and on the other hand we have Ta taylor swift that is not only uh, creating actual earthquakes or also swift quakes how they're called uh, during her concerts because there's so many people vibing to her music that um i think one of her concerts created the the higher or like a new um record of like a 2.0 like a really light earthquake <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, but what i also wanted to talk about is that uh taylor swift after finishing her tour this year it was right was it this year that she actually gave what was it 50 million to all of the people that worked on the tour with her or what was it yeah yeah, yeah that was a like bonus that. yeah and for every truck driver every truck driver got 100k as extra exactly so, what so I you, saw, yeah. you can see like the the complete opposites you know of like people really appreciating the people that work for them again like with the whole list of stuff it's still allegations like we don't know but um we just wanted to point those kind of out to see the different show the differences yes Steffi? let me just phrase that real quick what Lisa said yeah, so sure. this is this is the actual thing she said on Instagram. With passion comes hard work and high standards. Sometimes I have to make hard decisions, but, but it's never my intention to make anyone feel uncomfortable or like they aren't valued as an important part of the team. That's what okay. she said. That was her phrasing. Okay, thank you so much. So we basically wanted to like show you two different uh, creators that share a very different public opinion. One is way further back nowadays with her private life very like um how do you say it really thought through about what things she posts on the other hand we have lizzo i don't know if you follow or watch what lizzo does on twitter like she literally posts every single thing she does more or less um and mm. she's also very loud about like her opinions and stuff which sometimes is good sometimes is bad and for example there was also 
um when you listen to this i think like two weeks ago or something like that um we had the whole kai riot incident in new york city if you don't know kai a big uh twitch streamer is he still on twitch or is he on kick now he's, a, he's sure. on twitch still i think twitch, and right? youtube videos like he's creating both yeah so he basically uh called for a meetup and he was promising people to give away like playstation 5s and stuff like that and his meetup um ended into a huge riot in, in new york where people were jumping on cars destroying stuff and i think up to 60 people got injured or something like that um yeah so yeah we just want to arrest all of it a <laughs> lot of crazy shit like kai himself he was jumping around on cars and stuff like you can just put it into youtube search the whole thing there's a lot of videos there's a lot of uh news reports on what happened it's just crazy crazy stuff so um if you guys want to check it out you can find it for sure online and you're all smart enough um, to find it on social media so we just wanted to talk about how important it is for you as a creator or somebody in the public eye to actually decide how you first of all want to present yourself uh, in mm -hmm. public what uh parts of your life you want to share what kind of statements you want to um, make and how um, smart you want to act with what you do in public and what uh, if you want to take a side in some controversial discussions, topics, and so on. So, um, like Steffi, how how would you say it? Um, how would how how would you say um, does a creator have to take a stand when it comes to politics or controversial topics like do, do you feel like you you need to take a stand you need to um you know wh whatever it is doesn't matter if it's um politics like back then when the whole trump stuff happened mm. or now when the the whole um elections are gonna come up do you feel like creator it's important that creators uh, stand up and make politic statements uh overall i say no because while we sometimes forget it's just because they have millions of followers, um, they're still people. They're still people like you and me. We don't... And why do you expect... I understand the meaning behind or the thinking behind of it because you have a great reach, you have a big reach that can go both directions, good directions and bad directions as we see every day, right? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you test your limits like Elon Musk and do stuff with, uh, with crypto or whatever it is, you have an influence on those people who follow you, which you have to be very aware of. And that's, as you said earlier, um, why it's very important to decide what you want to share. And if someone doesn't feel comfortable with sharing anything about politics, because they're also not very like into this topic, which is okay, as much as it's okay if you're very into this topic, because we, we need all of those different people, um, but it should be never... Uh, forced like yeah if a, if a if a big artist is just an artist and you love them for the music why would you ever tell them hmm but it's crazy right now in your in 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 your country like you have to stand up for this and make a statement if they don't want that to do like uh, to do that then i wouldn't force them and that's what i expect from people because not everyone is like this you know yeah, exactly. not everyone feels the same way like this and not everyone decides to like share these things um on social media or through their brand or whatever they do they just want to make music maybe and give you a good time with their music but that doesn't mean they owe you anything about any other topic no that's how i see it yeah i mean what same about you kind of like it doesn't matter for me technically if you're a musician if you're an actor if you're yeah. a social media creator a streamer whatever it is i feel like nowadays i i think we talked about that kind of stuff a very long time ago in an episode it was mm -hmm. um along the i think it was when the whole like black life matters stuff happened me too like that that kind of time mm -hmm. and um <clears throat> there were a lot of people speaking out and standing up for people which i personally think is super super important like i'm not saying it, it's wrong in any way like i think it's really important that we have people that speak out that we yeah. have people that inform and teach people um about what's going on right and and what you can do to help etc cetera, etc cetera. i think it's really important but um a thing that also came in this time um from, from what i saw it was often 
people started shaming people if they decided to yeah, not speak yeah. out on a topic or not take a stand or not um, call out for people to, I don't know, ask for donations or mm -hmm. uh, spread awareness or whatever it is. Um, but I think one thing that's really important that people need to learn at least from my point of view, that some people, me included, like I often choose to not um, engage in topics like this just for the simple reason that I feel like I'm not educated enough in certain topics yeah. to talk about it. Like we obviously, we talk about a lot of topics, but there's just certain topics where I feel like I do not have the insight. I don't have the experience. Yeah. I don't have I'm not close enough to the topic to speak out on it doesn't mean that I don't think it's important to learn about it and I probably learn about it anyway but I just decide to for example personally don't speak out about it and that is something yep. that I think is really dangerous when people start going around shaming people for not engaging into those kind of topics um yep. doesn't matter if you are a creator or you know when we had the the trends with I mean in retrospect doesn't matter if it's like a stupid thing to do or whatever you know when people change their like profile pictures like when it was uh, just with charlie you know when like um in mm -hmm. france it happened and everybody changed their profile pictures to the to the flag or people um post a black square for a uh, black life matters and so on and so on and then where yeah, people uh, like oh like you're not doing it like that means you're you're, you're evil. against it. you're against it or yeah, whatever yeah. it is and and that is very very dangerous and i think especially if you're in you're, you're in a public eye i think it should be normal that people or it should be accepted but that people don't uh or decide to not not to engage into politics religion certain things that happen um in the public right now yeah. that you just don't want to be engaging in because you maybe not experienced enough or it's a topic of of trauma for you or that triggers you in whatever way um so that is something that i think is important that especially politics and religion are two things that everybody needs to decide themselves if they want to be yeah. um, a part of that discussion or not and um the same with private life you know like for example like i'm i'm super open with sharing everything about my private life but there's other people that love to share their art or whatever it is that they share in the public eye but everything that is private is off the charts for them you know yeah. like yeah. and i think yeah. everybody needs to balance and share the part of those through topics um the way they want it and i think there should be nobody from anywhere being able to tell you what you're allowed to share and what you're not allowed to share no, when no. it comes to those three <clears throat> things. Um, and especially when it comes to uh, taking a side on controversial topics. Like, again, I think it's really important that we do have creators that um, educate and do uh, public statements in exactly those type of conversations. But it's also a hard thing because if you have a certain following there will always be certain people that maybe are not as secure and who they are and not as educated maybe on topics or in general that they will just copy paste what you say so your opinion is going to be the opinion of some of the people that follow you and that is for example also one of the reasons that i'm really careful with those kind of things because I don't want to be the person that tells people that needs to be your own opinion as well. You know what I mean? That is like the yeah, thing yeah, for me yeah. that's that's dangerous, especially when it comes to, to politics. Because there's so yeah. many people that just follow blindly just also, because they like you as a person. You can't expect everyone or every person that is in public to be in every single topic and that's why we have this variety and that's why it's very like beautiful to have this variety some people focus exactly. on that some people focus on that just because i decide to not speak out on a pol political uh, topic doesn't mean uh i don't care about everything in the world or mm -hmm. anything in the world it's just this one thing i decided to like keep out of my social media life and um that's something followers or a fan base sometimes forgets especially when it then comes to hating on other creators together yeah. like yeah. jumping yeah. into the comments to like shit talk them why they do this a certain way or do not do this a certain way and this is something 
you have to be very careful of and we have seen that with all oh, the yeah. hate raids and oh, yeah. a lot of like mo many 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 times especially on twitch with the influence people have and also i gotta say you have to see like you have to be or keep in mind that there's so many minors there as well these are just teenagers like ranting and going wild especially with all the sumer creators out there as well like kai is born in 2001 he's very young as well obviously so you mm -hmm. have to like you have certain stages in life like we had right we talked about it we were teenagers we were jealous of things we we didn't want people to copy us whatever it is like you learn all these things sooner or later or not at all mm -hmm. um but you're in different stages and those people often don't see what damage they can cause with just this comment um and that's why you have to be like on one side like very careful when you decide what to share like on social media when it comes to public topics like that obviously if you do politics um you also have a certain bubble right you have people that agree with you and you have a lot of people that won't agree with you but once you start becoming um for example an activist for something you create a bubble of people who think the same but for me what's very important to me is is that you you accept other opinions as well you cannot yeah. just jump onto someone and just shit talk and hate them because they're not um sharing your opinion and that's what has like why the internet is pretty much a curse for me nowadays because this is literally what they do they judge they jump and they hate yeah. and that's why i sometimes have to take breaks from social media. Like sometimes I'm just gone for two or three days. I'm not posting anything. And then I'm coming up with like stories again, a bunch of stories, because I need to like recharge my battery because it just, it, it just uh, bothers me so much mentally that I see these things that I have to take a step back. Because mm. I, don't, I don't understand why um, people do that. And this is also because of, very young like there's a lot of young people obviously and you are a role model to them and that's what you have to kind of like be aware of yeah most of the times so yeah yeah that's the thing like with with the bigger you reach the bigger your responsibility in a way or another is also how what you say what you what you share like you have to think about that not only everything you say is gonna be judged and looked at from every single an angle and come back and bite you in the ass years later but it's it, you also have to think about as you said very well how many people you influence with whatever you say so sometimes you, or you should be really careful with the choice of your words as well and um i think as mm. you already said like and those people will not realize it until they're older um mm as you said also very well that certain lessons in life some learn them early some learn them late and i can just say like if i would have been if i would have had the reach that kai has in his young age at the same age it would probably not have been a good thing if that makes sense yeah that's what uh, i mean imagine us being 16 17 having like he has in total i think 15 millions like mm -hmm. followers and yeah. his reach is like multiply that with whatever like imagine that some i just compared it with some k-pop bands have mm -hmm. millions of followers um but still don't have as many as him and he's one person so many people look up to and that's why you have to decide like very carefully if you um share your opinion and if you do that like Especially when it comes to politics and these things, yeah, right? Yeah. If you just say, "Oh, this is ass," or "I don't, I don't know, I don't like this chewing gum," or whatever it is, you can't yeah, even cancel a whole. But you can still can cancel a whole brand, more or less. You like, can imagine you can. With, yeah. with that with that like that. That's the scale you have to think about. Like obviously, if you're somebody that has a reach of like I don't know, twenty, thirty thousand people a month. It won't matter if if you say like, oh yeah, I don't like this energy drink or I, I don't like this chewing gum. But if somebody like Kai says it, you know, it can be almost like a whole uh, generation 
of kids being like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna buy this anymore. I'm gonna tell my yeah, mom that she yeah. doesn't need to buy it anymore. And yeah. that can all like like that can make or break brands. It's actually it's crazy if you think about it like this. And yeah. that is a, like a huge burden on on people that are still not as developed in their brain you know like it, it takes to like end of your 20s till you're like till your mm. brain is fully finished uh developing so it it is actually crazy like especially like a guy like kai i'm pretty sure he has some kind of management behind him but yeah. like i i wish that guy would have somebody better to help him make his decisions because what happened in new york is like clearly not very well uh thought through. or it was made on purpose to generate all of those i mean if that was let, let, let's say okay you you make a meetup like this in the middle of new york city right you kind of know how many people he can reach right you kind of know that there's going to be a lot of people coming up so my question is probably not from kai himself but maybe from his management and the people there must have been some kind of calculations that there's going to be so much people that they're not that there's they... going to be a riot but there's going to be an issue or like blocking the streets or whatever in some way or another they probably didn't they calculate said... the huge amount but if that was just a huge stunt for getting like attention for him through like social media like free exposure that is probably the most stupid ass shit you can do yeah, but the thing is, the Zoomers will will celebrate it anyways. Oh, of the course, that's, the, that's the worst part Even about it. Even my mom but... saw Kai on the news today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what the management said, what I said, because they uh, made a statement that they have done multiple like events like this before, but what they didn't expect is so, so, so many people to show up for yeah. whatever reason. Like as you said, with his reach and everything. Um, but yeah, they they could they should have handled it differently and. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> should have taken like more security steps in um that's what they said like basically they didn't expect it to be that big and to be that outrageous in the mm. end like i don't even know how the riot started but it's just basically everyone just went crazy jumped on cars destroyed cars destroyed everything in the streets were <sighs> like okay wh what happened how did we get from we do a fan meetup with giveaways throwing ps5s in and all the shit to okay we're destroying the city like i have no clue it's just i think nobody I know. knows zoomer brain yeah i don't know <laughs> it, it, oh. i mean the thing is the thing is as well like if you're in such a huge group of people and one person starts it's just a group dynamic right like yeah, you yeah. you see people do it around you so you're like oh yeah everybody does it so i'm just gonna do yeah. the same right and yeah. you have to think about like a lot of those people are really really young or maybe just don't know that even though everybody is doing it, it's going to have reper re repercussions for you. It has consequences for you anyway, right? And I think and a lot of we... people are not aware. Yeah, and that's what we mean by influence, big in the influence of big influences. Kai was jumping on a car. Like, and if I see my role model doing this as a teenager or a 13-year-old, 12-year-old, I'm like, okay, that's, that's okay to do then. Because if he does it, I can do it. And then everyone just starts. Or a lot of people just start mm. because they don't know better, right? That's just how it is. Exactly. <clears throat> how it works, yeah. sadly. Yeah. But yeah, um, I think it was a really interesting uh, episode today. We ended up talking almost half the episode about video games, which doesn't <laughs> happen too often. But I loved it. I loved every single se every single second about it. I'm gonna keep you updated and sh if Steffi and me um, start our own Baldur's Gate um, session. Mm -hmm. uh we hope you enjoyed this episode um oh we almost forgot guys we almost forgot patreon we have patreon yes. now. you wanna you wanna yes. explain steffi we created as a form of like appreciation from your side guys right only if you want to we were thinking of creating like we were brainstorming how can we generate a little bit of support like for us a financial support and then we came to the conclusion or to the idea of creating a patreon or patreon site where you can support us with a monthly subscription like you can do on twitch or on other platforms wherever there's a subscription model to everything nowadays so we added that as well we have three different tiers by now um and we're gonna post sneak peeks like you're gonna see uh in advance like which episodes coming out 
the upcoming week. Like you're going to see what the topic is about. We might throw in some polls so you can vote on things or even suggest your own topics there. Mm -hmm. um, or, or, or like we, we prioritize those topics then and things like that. So it's basically a way of like supporting us in a voluntarily way if you want to. And we really, really, really appreciate it. Exactly. Uh, so. And on top of that, we, we are planning to shout out our new patrons uh, every episode. So in case mm -hmm. you decide to support us, we will either thank you verbally, depending how many we have, or we're going to put your name at some point in the podcast to make sure to thank you. Um, again, as we said, we are not able to monetize our podcast on Twitch because we don't have a thousand subscribers yet. And on YouTube. YouTube. Uh, on yeah sorry on youtube what am i, what am I saying twitch sorry twitch. So, <laughs> twitch yeah uh we're not uh able to monetize it on youtube and uh we're not making we haven't made any money through our podcast yet and as we said we really enjoy this this is a passion um project of us it is us basically burning money every single uh, month by paying our uh cutters for this and obviously steffi and me are working basically for free uh steffi is making all the graphics um, I'm just sitting here and talking, uh, recording and uploading. That's basically all I do. Everything else is made by Steffi. And You're Fudge. guiding us through the episode. Yeah, I mean, we need uh, obviously like your without, work without... is <laughs> primarily in the podcast. Like when we record, my work m more or less starts after the podcast. So I mean, we all it have goes our hand parts, in hand. Right? Exactly, we all have yeah. our, our work. We obviously also brainstorm before uh, we check out which topics we can talk about. We have a, a rough uh script or not really script but we put down like talking points that we will talk about in the script. episode to like we always have a script guys yeah 100 percent. um so yeah we we put in a lot of work for many many weeks and in case you enjoy the podcast in case you have a few bucks on the side and you want to keep it uh running and support us Please don't feel like you have to, but if you want to do it, you now have the chance to do that. Uh, you will be able to find the link uh, in our link tree. It will be in there. Uh, the tiers will have descriptions as well with which tier you have, what kind of influence. Um, if you are a patron and you suggest a cool topic, we're going to make sure that we prioritize those kind of topics to bring up um, in the podcast. Again, we're going to give you a little bit of uh, influence on choosing topics in the future, uh, give you sneak peeks, and so on and so on. Maybe sometimes some early access for some episodes or something like that. We don't know yet. We're going to let you know. Um, thank you so much for your feedback. Thank you for listening. We appreciate you. We love you. And we can't wait. A lot to see you again next week again guys thank you so much bye